Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this session on cyber security. So in this session we are going to look at virus and worms as well as frozons and backdoors. Okay, so first let's look at uh, virus. So you can think of virus as a kind of malware uh, which needs human intervention uh, to install it on a system. So once installed on a system, it can do several things. Uh, it can change file associations, it can delete files, it can change system settings, basically it can do anything. Okay, whatever the attacker wants, it will do that. So here we are looking at different types of virus. So first one is boot sector virus. So in your disk there is a type of sector called boot sector where the operating system and other system software locations are available. Okay, so this uh, virus when it gets into the system, it will get installed on the boot sector. That is, whenever you restart a system, it will automatically load into memory and will do whatever it wants to do. So that kind of virus is called boot sector virus. And next one is program virus. So it's a kind of virus which, um, let's say, um, gets installed as a part of a program or uh, delete or uh, changes the associations of programs etc so that kind of virus is a program virus and next one is multi parotide virus so you can see it's a combination of boot sector virus as well as program virus and next one is stealth virus so this kind of virus will try to hide from the antivirus Okay, so whenever the antivirus is scanning for the files, it will hide itself. So that's why it's called stealth virus. And next one is polymorphic virus. So this kind of virus will try to change its virus signature to hide from antivirus. Okay, so virus signature means uh, it's a mm, collection of things which will identify a particular kind of virus like uh, if you consider a virus it gets installed in a particular folder in a particular path so that is the signature of that virus okay so if you take another virus uh, they will uh, try to infect only some particular kind of files let's say exe files so that is another signature okay so like that this kind of virus will try to change its signature Okay, so next one is macro virus. So you will see macros uh, with respect to Microsoft Windows Word, Excel. So those kind of documents contain macros. So macro is a like a function which runs automatically when you open a file. Okay, so this kind of virus uh, will come as a macro. So whenever you open a document which is infected by a macro virus, it will automatically run and infect your system. And last type of virus is uh, ActiveX and or uh, Java virus. So these are the viruses that are uh, um, uh, that deals with third party components. So this is ActiveX, that is a Microsoft technology as well as Java, they are third party components. Okay, so a virus is present in them. So whenever you open a Java program which is infected with a virus, it, it will run on your system. Okay. So that's it about virus. And next, uh, there is, oh, sorry. Uh, before going to uh, Trojan horse and backdoors, uh, there is another kind of malware called worms. Okay, so worm is also a type of malware which can uh, propagate or spread from one system to another system without any human intervention. Okay, so once it gets installed on a system, it will scan the system for uh, your friends email addresses etc etc or uh, scans the network for other systems and uh, 
propagates to those systems or emails without doing anything. So that kind of malware is called worm. So the main difference between virus and worm is virus needs human intervention. That is, the user must do something uh, for the virus to get installed on the system. Whereas a worm does not require any human intervention. Okay, it propagates on its own without doing anything. And then we have Trojan horse and backdoors. And Trojan horse is another kind of malware which comes as part of another legitimate application. Uh, like when you download some softwares or games from the internet, uh, a Trojan might be already uh, installed or a part of that software or game. Okay. So when you install that software or game, you are all you are also installing the Trojan horse onto your system. So once the Trojan horse gets installed onto the system, it will contact the attacker, and the attacker can control take hold of the control of your system. Okay. And next backdoor. So you can see here it is a means of access to computer program that bypasses security mechanisms and where are these backdoors used is for maintaining access to the victim system so as previously discussed in the um, steps for uh, conducting attacks we have seen that uh, after reconnaissance and scanning scrutinizing and uh, uh, attacking there is a step called maintaining access okay so how do the attacker maintain access to the system is by installing backdoors. So it is a kind of malware, just like Trojan horse and all those things. So that is about Trojan horse and backdoors. So how do you protect yourself from backdoors is uh, don't visit any suspicious websites or links. Uh, serve the web cautiously okay and install antivirus right so once you install the antivirus you have to update the antivirus also simply installing the antivirus without updating it is uh, is no use if you don't update the antivirus your antivirus software will not be able to recognize the new uh, new types of malware so let's look at two tools. One is MMAP and another one is Nessus. Uh, although these two are not related to virus, worms, etc., I want to talk about these tools since they are very important in cyber security. So, first one is MMAP. So, it's abbreviates to Network Mapper and it's a de facto standard for network mapping and port scanning. So, in the reconnaissance phase, we will try to scan the ports of the target system, right? Okay, so NMAP is free and open source. Uh, it is used to perform reconnaissance, that is, to discover ports in the network. And this port scanning activity is sometimes called enumeration. Okay. So, the different types of scanning we can perform using NMAP or ping scan that is to know whether the system, particular system is uh, alive or not or reachable or not and then port scan, we have three types, uh, three main types of port scan, SIM scan, TCP scan and UDP scan and then we have service and version detection scan and then we have operating system detection and then we have script scan that is uh, scanning using script and then IPS or IDS evasion. So ping scan is generally used to list the systems which are alive on the network. So you can scan for an entire subnet and it will give you the list of all the systems which are alive on the subnet. So this is the option which is used for ping scan. So S means scan and N means ping scan. Okay. And then 
we have another type of scam called sin scam so this is based on the uh, mechanism of how tcp works so whenever you are establishing a connection using tcp the client will send a sin packet to the server the server will send back a synac packet that is a packet having two flags one is sin flag and ack flag set to one and then as a response to that synac the client has to send another packet called acknowledgement packet back to the server so after this uh, three messages are passed between client and server a connection will be established tcp connection will be established okay so what will nmap do is it will send the sin packet server will respond will uh, respond back with a synac packet but the client will not send the ack packet okay so since the uh, nmap already got the response so it means that the server is alive okay it's reachable so no need to send the ack packet okay so this sin scan is the default type of scan in nmap okay so it needs administrative privileges the uh, and this kind of scan is stealthy okay right and for skin sin scan we use capital s and another type of scan is tcp scan so the difference between sin scan and tcp scan is this scan completes the three way handshake so all the three messages are passed between the client and uh, target okay so for tcp scan we use capital t and next type of scan is udp scan and this scan takes long time and there is a possibility of timeouts so nmap sends empty udp packets whenever we use this scan and this often works well with version detection that is the version of the software running on that system and for udp scan we use capital u okay and this last option is we are scanning for only top 10 ports okay so in a system there are uh, well defined ports that list of well defined ports is called top ports and in the list of top ports we are scanning only for top 10 well known ports and then we have service and version detection so if some web server software is running on the target we need, we want to find what kind of web server software is that and what version of that web server software is that so for that purpose we will use service and version detection and the option is hyphen small s capital v okay and here this specifies sin scan and this v is for version detection and then if you want to detect what kind of operating system is being run on the target we will use capital o and then we can scan using scripts also so there is a scripting engine in nmap which is called nmap scripting engine and uh, so the engine is written in lua language okay and you can use scripts with nmap using this option capital c or by using the script word okay and uh, by default the scripts are available in, at this location so this is in linux based operating systems and using these scripts we can do all these things okay so it's kind of like advanced scanning okay so to search for the uh, scripts which are already available on your system you can use this command in linux locate star dot nsc and you can use scripts by the by as shown here okay so use the script option after the script option you use the name of the script so in this case the name of the script is ssh hyphen group dot nsc so what we are doing is we are doing a brute force scanning for ssh protocol 
okay right and then it can be nmap can be used for detecting ids or ips means intrusion detection system or intrusion prevention system or you can see if there is any firewall or not so for this purpose we will use a type of scan called ax scan acknowledgement scan so if there is a ids ips or any firewall is running you will get the response as filtered okay you will get the response of a particular port as filtered so if they, if nothing is installed you will get the response as unfiltered so for ax scan we use capital a and next kind of software i want to discuss is about nessus so it is called as a vulnerability scanner that is to detect what is what are the different types of software and what kind of uh, version is it and uh, what are the available exploits on the particular version of software all these details will be provided in a single software called nessus so the difference between nmap and nessus is nmap is a command line tool whereas nessus is a web application so it has a gui you can just click things and you can do the scans and you can exploit whatever you want so it is developed by an organization called tenable so it has two versions professional version and free version and of course free version has limited capabilities than professional version and what nessus can do is it can do all these things so you can see here it has lot of plugins for uh, performing different tasks so for starting the nessus this is the command so this is in linux and on the for the status of the nessus service this is the command and once the once you start the service you can access nessus interface using this url so this 8834 is like a default port for accessing nessus so that's it about nmap and nessus thank you